Shabbat Shalom to everyone. May I greet you all a Chag Matzot Sameach and also a very happy Sfirata Omer to those who are observing this wonderful privilege of Hashem to refine our Neshamot, our souls, into a higher and higher place, a madrega, a degree of spiritual elevation that we are going to be purified and refined by Hashem for the 50th day from the word of God after the Sfirata Omer comes the Chag Shavuot. The Chag Shavuot or the Feast of Pentecost from the Gentile terminology. It happened during our fathers, the Jewish fathers, our brothers, went there in Mount Sinai and God himself, his glorious presence came down. That itself blew my mind when I am meditating on that biblical truth. Imagine God stooped down a form of humility going down from Kise Hakabot, from his lofty high throne of, of the heavenlies worth trillions and even quadrillions, I believe, of my myriads of angels who were there worshiping the Holy One. Blessed be He, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. He went down. He went down on Mount Sinai inviting Bo, Bo, come. He's calling out his children to come and draw near to him. And then the spirit of Hashem filled that place. And all the soul, numbering to 600,000 men, regard, not, not including the women and the children, but if we are going to include the women and the children, maybe it will... We are more than 2 million. So those that monumentous time, that glorious time, where our Jewish brothers and fathers dwell together in unity, Hashem went down. His mighty presence and His words were heard by all of them. All of them heard the word of God. Never in the history did God repeat such event. All the women, the children, the elders, the leaders, the Kohen, the Kohanim, Moshe Rabbeinu, even those who, who, those who are still in the mother's womb, the Hachamim said, they heard the voice of the Holy One of Israel. That voice shook the earth and shook the heavens. And during that time, they received a grand revelation of God. They heard. But I, I long to, to be one of those people during the time to hear the very words of God with, with my naked ears. They heard. And then they spoke in one word that really pleased the heart of Hashem. That beautiful statement in one tune, B'nai Israel said, Chol Asher Diber Hashem Nasevenishma. All the words that Hashem had spoken, we will obey and we will understand later. So Hashem gave the gift to his bride, the Matan Torah, the giving of the Torah. And now we are feasting on the Torah of Hashem given by Moshe Rabbeinu. And now a replication and a repeat performance during the time of the Shiliachim or the followers in the Talmudim after the resurrection. 
of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah, they were ordered and commanded to stay in that upper room in the city of Jerusalem. Never, never to go any place but stay there until they received the promise of the Father. And on that day, the spirit of Hashem suddenly came down like a mighty rushing wind and filled those 120 disciples of Yeshua the Messiah. Filled them with a Ruach HaKodesh and with fire. There appeared like a tongue of fire over their heads and they started to prophesy. They started to speak the very oracles of God. The prophecy of Yoel Hanavi, Joel, the prophet, has come to pass. This is the word of the prophet Yoel, because Shaliach Kepha stood among the 120 and gave his first powerful sermon. And it came about that during that time, the disciples was scattered and wherever they are, the name of Yeshua the Messiah was heard. And scripture says they were able to turn the world during that then known world for Messiah Yeshua. It paid a price, a big price to pay. That's their very lives for the sake of the kingdom of heaven to come and be fulfilled. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, we are heading towards that spiritual elevation. In this 49 days of Sfirata Omer, the counting of the Omer, God is commanding us to observe every day the attributes of God being transferred to us. His chesed, his kevura, his yesod, all the attributes of God, he wants to impart it to his children. That we are going to be elevated higher and higher until we become that perfect, matured, united believer in Messiah Yeshua. That we are going to be working the works of God through the power of this Holy Torah and the Ruach HaKodesh combined. During that Sinai, Mount Sinai encounter, the Holy Torah, the Torah HaKodesh had been given. And the people of God had received the word of God, the Torah HaKodesh. It's not just the law, it is the word of God. And the word of God has no expiration date. I'm always squeezing that hard enough for us to see. Because I'm trying to, to, to defeat the spirit of anti-Semitism that went along the corridors of generation that says the Torah is a law. Others call it in a very unfortunate way label it is just it is it is no longer effective because it is just the law and yeshua the messiah jesus had fulfilled it so there's an ended it, it ended it stopped no the word of god never stopped as a matter of fact today we don't just receive the the torah Hedusha, but we also receive what the believers in that upper room received a double back-to-back -back blessing, the word of God, plus the infilling of the Ruach HaKodesh over our lives. That is, if we finish successfully the 49 Sfirata Omer, the 49 days of the counting of the Omer, in which we ask that God help me and enable me to, to get rid of this old Adamic nature, this works of the flesh that I used to live by, this, 
these attitudes and behavior that are not pleasing before you. I want to be changed from faith to faith and from righteousness to righteousness and by, from spirit to the, to, to the refining of the Holy Spirit and turn out to be that vessel that God wants me to become. That we may do the works of Hashem in this end times. In the times, we call it so chaotic. This time when Israel is divided. The United States is greatly divided. The nations of the earth are in turmoil and in panic. Evil is spreading like wildfire. Perversion, the homosexuality is on the rise. Same-sex marriage and even the bestiality. Men, women marrying an animal, having sexual relationship with animal, plus their same, same sex. It's happening unprecedentedly. Greater than what happened during the generation of Noah, the righteous man of God, who turned into a man of the land. He was demoted and turned into, from the righteous man of God, he turned into the man of the earth. Why? Because of some personality problem that had not been arrested. But now with this Firata Omer, God is giving us the blessed opportunity to overcome the things over our personal lives. That it's going to be a tikkun hanefesh, a rectification of our souls. And then after the tikkun hanefesh, then comes tikkun olam. We can all, all together make a rectification of the world through the power of God's Torah and the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, my friend, the topic that I would like to, to teach is about this Chag, Chag Matzot. And before I start, may I just ask you to join me in prayers. Heavenly Father, in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, I pray that you will open our hearts and open the eyes of our understanding and let the word of God run its free course and be sown deep, deep down the neshamot, the souls of the listeners and hearers, especially to those who are diligently receiving the Torah portion the words of God, the fresh manna, the fresh bread from heaven each passing day. May you satis satisfy them with great joy. May you just enable all of us to see the wonderful face of our Messiah Yeshua written in the word of God, especially in this very great Chag, the Feast of Matzot. Now anoint me, speak through me, your bond servant, and let your name alone be glorified and exalted. For I ask this all in Yeshua's name. Amen. With the aid of this PowerPoint presentation, today is the 17th of Nisan, year 5783, and it is the 8th of April, 2023, and it is a Chag Hamatzot, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So Chag Hamatzot Sameach to everyone, and it is the second day of Sfirata Omer, or the second day of the counting of 
the Omer, which is commanded by Hashem, written in Sefer Vayikra or Leviticus chapter 23, verses 12, 15, and 16. And today is the holy day of Shabbat. So Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Let's go to the very key text, which is in Vayikra, Leviticus chapter 12, verse 11. The message that I would like to impart is entitled The Path of the Matzah. The Path of the Matzah. Verse 11 of chapter 12 from the Sefer Vayikra Leviticus, it says, And this is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. You can say that with me. You shall eat it in haste. In haste. It is a Passover sacrifice to the Lamb. Take a close look and open your heart. This is a command that we are supposed to eat of the Pesach, the lamb, plus the matzah, the unleavened bread, in haste. There is a position of urgency. Time is of the essence here. It is the Passover sacrifice of Hashem or to the Lord. Verse 12, or verse 15 of chapter 12. For seven days, you shall eat 11 cakes, or the matzot, the unleavened bread, or unleavened cakes. But on the preceding day, you shall clear away all leaven from your houses. And for whoever eats leaven from the first day, until the seventh day shall that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Did we hear that and we read it right? I repeat, for whoever eats leaven from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off. Karet in Hebrew, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. The next verse, 16. And on the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. And on the seventh day, shall you shall have a holy convocation. No work may be performed on them. But when it's eaten by any soul, that alone may be performed for you. So it refers to the eating of the matzot, or the plural of the unleavened bread. Let us continue. Verse 17. And you shall watch over the unleavened bread. For on this very day I have taken your legions out of the land of Egypt, and you shall observe this day throughout all generations as an everlasting statute. Take a close look, my dear friends, that this Mitzvah, the commandment of God, that we are commanded to eat only unleavened bread. Matzot in Hebrew. Matzah is the singular form of matzot. But I would like to stress out something deep, which I saw from scripture, that it has to be eaten in haste. There is a sense of of hurry, hurry, hurry. There is no time to waste. There is a sense of urgency. There is no time to, to gallivant and waste any precious minute. 
make haste because it is the Lord's Pesach. It is a Passover to Hashem. What is that all about? And anyone who violates that commandment, Hashem said, anyone who eats leavened bread, it means bread with yeast, bread that is unleavened, that is not unleavened, any kind of bread that is supposed to show us a picture that it's it's seemingly stringent and very strict commandment. But may I assure you now, it is not a strict commandment. It is a loving commandment from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It is something that the nation of Israel know very well from the depth of their souls. That is something that the, the making of the matzah requires an accurate and precise time to make that matzah without leaven. The path of matzah is opposite to the path of the chametz. Chametz means leaven. Bread with yeast. We know very well that this matzah is commanded by God to all the house of Israel to be observed and be performed for one week. It is something that he is giving us a deep message and lesson for us to see what is the spiritual implication of this over our individual lives. If we want to be successful and overcome, and we want to be included, to be in his presence in Olam Haba, in, in, the, in uh, the world eternity, then we are going to aspire for this. Not just for a period of one week, but every day of our lives, and not in the physical sense of it, but more in the spiritual implication of it. There is a cross-parallel reference of Exodus chapter 12, verses 11 to 18, and we can find that in the letter of Apostle Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 6. Listen to this. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know the saying? It takes only a little, a little chametz, a little leaven, a little yeast to leaven a whole bunch of dough. Verse 7, get rid of the old chametz so that you can be a new batch of dough. Because in reality, you are unleavened. Listen to that. It throws a parallel truth to what Yeshua the Messiah said, that to those who are His, to those who belong to Him, united with Him, Yeshua the Messiah, are already unleavened. It goes to show that we are free from the yeast. We are free from the leaven, which is a symbol of sin. We have been made clean. We have been cleansed by the word of God. We have been cleansed through the power of our suva, repentance. And through the power of the word of God, sanctify them, Father, with thy truth, for thy word is truth. Yohanan John 17, verse 17. It says, for you are a new batch of dough because in reality, you are unleavened. This is 
an assurance to those true believers united with Messiah hanging on with tenacity by faith and by trust in Him each borrowed day of our lives. This is an assurance that God has called us as matzot or matzah or unleavened bread. Even as He is the matzah of life. He is the bread of life without leaven, without yeast, without sin, without spot, without blemish, worthy to be the sacrificial lamb of God that he paid for the sins of the world. He said for our Pesach lamb, the Passover lamb, the Messiah has been sacrificed. Let us continue. Verse 8. So let us celebrate the Seder. There is a celebration. There is a, a, a merry and joyous, glorious getting together like a normal celebration of a feast. Let us celebrate the Seder not with the leftover chametz, the leftover leavened bread that he ordered and commanded us that we are to read our house. Take away all the chametz that are left at the corners, inside the fridge, on the table, under the table, on the floor, any 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 um enclosures that we bring our, our food and stock our food there. Be sure to take away the kamets, the kamets of wickedness and evil, but with the matzah of purity and truth. We are being told by God to celebrate the feast of unleavened bread. Do, do, do you see the, the, the beauty of what God's purpose and plan for our lives is? Part of His plan that we are no longer those people of the world. He has sanctified us. He has already set us free. During that moment, we did genuine teshuva, genuine repentance. And after that repentance, we rectified all the wrong doings and old behaviors and lifestyle that we used to have. The works of the flesh. We got rid of that. We mortified our works of the flesh, our bodily desire. We are already people set apart for God's purpose. We have been called to be as Mamlechet Kohanim, Vegoi Kadosh, as kingdom of priests, priests whose work is to offer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu lives, our loved ones, the works of our hands, our ministries, we do it in such a way that is without chametz, without yeast, without leaven, because yeast, again, is a picture. Leaven is a picture of sin. It is a picture of malice. It is a picture of wickedness. But unleavened bread or matzah is a picture of purity, holiness, and truth. It says, when you do this, when you eat of it, you are going to make haste. Even during the making of the matzah, you don't waste time. You have to exactly and precisely cook that bread, that dough, that flour dough 
into its proper time required. Or else, if you make the dough and then put it aside and let it rest for a while, guess what's, what's going to happen? That dough will rise. And when that dough rises, it becomes chametz. It becomes a void. A picture of our lives. A picture of our lives that we are being exhorted and encouraged by God to keep on elevating our souls higher and higher and higher. Learning His Word and doing His Word. Performing the work of a sanctified vessel. Truly hating even the spot of the works of the flesh. Not anymore being tempted and being allured and enticed to go back to our former Mitzrayim Egypt because we long to taste those, those spices, those food, which signifies the materialism and physicality and worldliness back there in our former life, our spiritual Mitzrayim. We have been set free, my friends. And we could keep on setting this lifestyle, a new lifestyle, a lifestyle of unleaven. We are supposedly the matzah before God. Are you a matzah? Are you an unleavened bread of God? Or are you a chametz? Still having this craving, having this, this temptation and falling once in a while to taste the special offer of the spiritual Mitzrayim, wanting to taste the spicy kind of goody-goody life back there in Mitzrayim? Or are we that person that we don't even want to hear anymore? We have this hatred, this perfect hatred about that once upon a time, we lived our lives apart from God. Something that we are, are supposedly observing this week. And after this matzot, this feast of matzot, we continue to live as an unleavened matzah, unleavened bread before God. This is an eternal commandment, an eternal covenant of God, which we are commanded to live by and observe. A very powerful statement from the life of the Avot, especially in the life of Yaakov, Avinu, Jacob. Did you do you still remember the Sulam Yaakov? Do you still remember the ladder of Yaakov? He dreamt when he was when he was brought by Hashem, he was led by Hashem to that place in Hebrew is Hamakom, which means the place of God. That is exactly where Avraham Avinu offered his Yahid, his only son. Yitzchak, as an offering at the altar there in Mount Moriah. Yaakov Avinu went there in that mountain and he slept and he dreamt of a ladder where he, there in that ladder he saw Malachim, angels, coming up and going down. Why did it say angels, which are servants of God in other translations, 
But that dream, those were real malachim, spiritual servants of God, angels. And he saw in the dream angels coming up and then going down. Ascending first. What does it mean? Ascending first to that spiritual elevation on the mountain of God, the presence of God. If you hear of the mountain of God, you understand the meaning of it. It is the presence of God. It is Aliyah, Rokhan Yut. It is the spiritual elevation that God is calling us to do. There is, there is a message of urgency. The message of haste, haste, hurry, hurry, hurry defeats the purpose of being lethargic, being lazy, not moving. Because that is not who we are. We are people of faith. And faith requires action. Faith requires demonstration. Faith requires expression. Like what Yaakov Shaliach said, show me your faith without action. And I'll show you my faith with action. Because faith without works is dead. It is very true over that life of Yaakov Avinu, he saw that angels, before it descends down to Olam Hazeh, the world of action where we are right now, he saw that angels were ascending up first. And that gave him a message from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. To Yaakov, he is heading towards that place called Haran, a wicked place where his uncle Lavan has his territory and the wicked place has wicked idolatrous men. Before he goes there, he has to go up. He has to go Aliyah. He has to elevate his neshama in, in order to establish himself first in his spirituality to receive that maturity from God. Because when he descends down, he will engage himself with the wicked men in Haran. And we knew very well what happened. He got the revelation. Yaakov Avinu, further on his study of Torah, in the yeshiva of Shem and Aver, before he proceeded to Haran, he went to fulfill that dream, the ladder, the Sulam Yaakov. He assured himself that he has to ascend first into that level of maturity that he will no longer be fickle-minded, being tossed to and fro from the different deceptions in life, especially from his uncle, Lavan, that he's going to encounter. And when he reached that place of Haran, what happened? He became very successful. Why? Because when he went up, into that spiritual elevation, into that spiritual maturity, God assured him that he will be with him going to Haran. And there in Haran, he became very successful despite of so many deceptions and lies that was thrown upon him by his uncle Lavan. He was able to maneuver and overcome those deceptions until his wife Rachel Emenu gave birth to his favorite son Yosef. And during that time Yaakov decided to return back to his land 
where he belongs, went back to Canaan. And what did the Bible say? When he went to Haran, back to Canaan, after 22 years, with his whole family, with his innumerable flocks and, and cattle and herd, the Bible says, what did he do there back in Canaan? There in Canaan, he Vayeshev. The word Vayeshev is a term in Hebrew that means relaxed. He retired. He sit back, he sit back and smelled the roses and relaxed and retired. And what happened next? The moment he retired, he parked his car there in his garage and never serving the Lord anymore because he said, I'm retired. I have done my work. Back there in Haran, I was able to glorify God. I was able to, to acquire these this sons of mine. And my favorite certificate of retirement was my favorite son, Yosef. And when he did that, when he retired, chaos and trouble came along like a domino effect that caused a huge blunder of Yaakov Avinu. There started all the troubles in his household, like a popping popcorn inside the microwave. There, all the unexpected, unexpected things happened, like a free-falling meteorite swiftly zooming downward on the earth atmosphere non-stop due to its gravitational pull that created a deep impact hole in the ground. What happened there? The picture of Jacob's life from a matzah to chametz. The sense of urgency to elevate and serve God to, to redeem the time, for the days are evil. He stopped. He parked his car too long in his garage. And what happened? His tires flattened because it is on a standstill. When he was, when he realized chaos had surrounded his family. Do you remember when Dina was raped and abused? Do you remember when Yosef was thrown into that pit? Do you remember when his brothers entertained envy and jealousy? Do you remember that even Yehuda married or sent against his own daughter-in-law, Tamar. Everything became chaotic. Why? Because Yaakov, Vayeshev, he stopped, he relaxed until he settled down and rise up like Chametz. Chametz. Until something happened. Something happened before he realized it. His favorite son became a prisoner and a slave there in Egypt. This is a clear picture, my dear friends, that our lives today, right now, is a borrowed one. We have to spend our life like a matzah, a matzah that 
needs to be cooked in a precise time. No wasting of minutes because if we waste minutes, if we just put it aside and let it stay idle sooner or later before we realize the dough rises up, it becomes comets. It is a picture of each and every one of us showing us that we have to live our lives in haste. We have to engage ourselves with Hakadosh Baruch Hu to do His work and fulfill His work and to complete His work through the power of His Spirit. To that grace unlimited that will be supplied to us. Let us never be like that chametz, that leaven, that leaven bread that rises up, that is no longer approved by God to be eaten. We, it has to be thrown away. And anyone who eats bread that has leaven, a picture of sin, that soul will be corrupt, will be cut off from the house of Israel. Is it a strict commandment? It is not. Simply, our Father God is saying, you cannot spend your eternity with me with leaven in your heart. You can never spend eternity with me believing that it's only by grace and by grace and by grace you are eternally saved. That is a doctrine or teaching or dogma that came from the pit of hell. It goes to simply show that we are to live our lives of unleavened bread. A life that is free from chametz, free from yeast. And the only way we can achieve that is never to be idle, never to relax, never to retire from the service of Hashem. Please don't get me wrong, my dear one. I never insinuate and never directly or indirectly that we are not supposed to rest, not supposed to take a break. I never say anything like that. We are entitled for an, a day or a two to rest, to recover from the tiredness and weariness from our labor and service, of course. But what the message is telling us and warning us is resting too much. Because we feel we are already certificated by God to retire. Because we have already done much. Take the case of David Hamelech. During his late years, in, this, in his 90s, what did he do? He made, a, he made a census. He just, he just counted the blessing in his kingdom. And he relaxed as the king, a man David, a man after God's own heart, was also caught in the cobweb of retiring, settling down. And when he settled down, his life became a chametz. It rose up like a dough. And God wasn't pleased with him, and he was punished. He was punished in his late old years because he was a tzaddik. More measure of, of privilege, if, you're, if you become a tzaddik, you become mightily used of God. You receive much gifting and calling and anointing from God. Guess what? Unto him much is given, therefore much is required. We should know better if we know the Holy Torah. We should know better 
if we live in the presence of his Shekinah's presence, there is no time for, for retirement. It is just changing of tires and hit the road again. It is something that we created by the Creator in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And I quote, Vayiser Hashem Elohim et ha'adam afar min ha'adama vayipach be'apav dishmat ha'chayim vayhi ha'adam le'nefesh chaya. Genesis 2, 7 says, Hashem Elohim and God, the Lord God, Vayetzer, Vayetzer formed Ha'adam, man, afar min Ha'adama, from the dust of the ground. So from where was man, Adam, made from? Min Ha'adama, from the dust of the ground. And then God, Vayipach, Vayepav, Nishmat Chaim. And God breathed unto man's nostrils, and he became a nishmat chayim, a living soul. And then, vayhi hadama le nefesh chaya. And that man came from the dust of the ground, became a le nefesh chaya. That word nefesh means soul. But it did not say nefesh, it says le nefesh. There is a prefix, a prefix Lamed, the Lamed, the Hebrew letter Lamed, Lenefesh, means that soul became a potential living soul, a potential to elevate, a potential to be successful. That soul can be a very successful one if he does his work properly. Or that soul may maintain to be just like a dust of the ground. The dust is being, is being trodden down. People walk on the dust. That is an idle piece of nature that God has created. And we came from the dust. Hashem said, from dust thou art. And therefore, dust, you shall return. We are not just made of the dust, a clay, a dust of the earth or the ground. God breathed unto our nostrils and we became a lay nefesh. Chaya. Our soul has the potential to elevate and elevate into that highest madrega according to the perfect plan of God, as long as we live like a matzah. We don't allow ourselves to sit aside, relax, and rise up. Because a small leaven, a small yeast, a small sin can leaven up the whole dough. Before we know it, we are already accustomed to that lazy and slothful behavior that we used to, to be. That we say, oh, later, I'm going to serve the Lord later. Oh, I will just pray first and seek God for what his plan for me is. My goodness gracious, my dear brother, what have you been called by God to do? Continue doing it. Don't ask for the will of God. What he called you to do, continue it. Continue to walk the path. Continue to do that spiritual elevation of your neshama. Continue to work the works of God. Because something that you will never regret. Be a matzah constantly moving and actively ascending higher and higher, always actively committed for the elevation 
of our souls. And give no time to be chametz. Give no time to be leavened. Rest a while, why not? Take a break a day or two, why not? But always go back, rise up, and continue. Hold your hand to the wheel. Continue to hit the road and serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Energized, rejuvenated, and fully equipped with His Spirit and with His Holy Torah. Like what happened with Itzkak Avinu there on Mount Moriah when his father Avraham Avinu obeyed God and offered himself, his son, and laid his son on the altar. And when Avraham Avinu was ready to shech, slit the throat of his son, a voice from heaven came and say, don't hurt your son. And it became a dramatic and sensational event for Yitzchak Avinu. Imagine, his heart was so obedient to his father and to his heavenly father, God. He did not panic, neither he struggled, but he gave his all obediently to perform the will of God. He didn't realize it was just a test. And after that cruel psalm, after that very traumatic event that happened between the father and the son, maybe you will say, oh, it's Kach Avinu or Isaac deserved to rest for a while because he managed to to achieve and became successful over the trial that was given to both of them, father and son. He needed a break because of what happened to him. Maybe you will think that way. He's entitled for a pause. He's entitled for a, a, a week of rest, or a couple of weeks in the Bahamas, or five days in that beautiful Rocky Mountain High to just, to just unwind and refuel. Did the righteous servants of God, did they do that? Took a break? went out of the will of God because they took their leisure and rest time as so many so-called leaders do going out of their pulpits, going out of their ministry coverage, going to many places and spending their dollars and effort in sightseeing in watching this and watching that, and doing selfies and, and all the comforts of life, disregarding the calling of God that so many among the nations of the world are dying, are hungry and thirsty without food and without clothing and without the medicine. But they are so busy in doing their, their selfies and, and watching the beautiful sceneries in the outskirts of, of their places, relaxing. How did Yitzchak and Abraham dealt with themselves after that Akeda? the binding of its cock on Mount Moria. After the binding scenario, our, our Bible says that Avram Avinu went down and went back while, listen to this, Yitzchak Avinu 
or Isa was dropped off by his father Abraham. Do you know where? He was dropped off after that incident of the binding of Isaac. He was dropped off in the yeshiva of, Hash of Shem and Aver. He went back in the study of Torah. He continued to elevate himself. When you are in that adrenaline spiritual rush, you cannot pause, my friend. There is an extreme exploding joy bursting like a free-flowing river that Yeshua said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. You cannot afford to sit back and relax. You cannot afford to retire. You cannot afford to be slothful and lazy. All the more you want to, to, to achieve that greater measure of elevation of that spiritual maturity because you know very well that there is always time for retirement. There is always time for rest. And that is when Yeshua the Messiah, who is the Prince of Peace, Sar Shalom, will get us to himself and we can retire in his presence. But just the same, when we are already in his holy presence during the millennial reign of Shalom for 1,000 years, we will still serve him. I doubt, I doubt if we will just sit back and relax, we are not going to do that. I believe all the more when we see face to face our Lord, we are all the more going to be energized and serve Him with gusto, with delight, with full enjoyment. Because in His presence, there is fullness of joy. And in His right hand, there are pleasure forevermore. My dear friend, I just hope that you have been blessed somehow with this simple teaching from the heart of God. I hope that you have been enlightened in a way, especially now that we are in this tribulation period. All hell is breaking loose, as they say. Every nation of the world has her own pie of Jacob's trouble or tribulation. We are being bombarded by all the wickedness and the evils of darkness. If you don't see it yet, evil is now turning to be good and that good is now being turn into evil. Even our own nation is in the verge of civil unrest. Israel. The nations have, have already stared so seriously at us once again. A greater measure of anti-Semitism is on the rise. The Arab Muslim countries are now joining forces, the Shiites and the Sunnis, where they used to fight one another, but now they are already united because of what happened in Al-Aqsa, Al that, that mosque, the Dome of the Rock. There was a tension. There were riots happening in that Dome of the Rock, in the center of the city of Jerusalem. And that awakened and refueled the anger and the animosity of all the Arabic Muslim countries surrounding Israel. And that will spark the Gog Umagog, the battle of Armageddon, anytime. 
China is already on the rise, and he, she is now the mediator of Russia and Iran. Not no, no longer America. America is now downhill. America is so busy licking her wound, licking her 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 body with immorality. America is at the verge of God's judgment. My friend, unless we do our rightful part and participate, unless we redeem the time for these days are evil, unless we rise up like a hasteful cooking of the matzah, and as we live like a matzah, like our Lord and Savior, He is the Pesach. He is the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. And He is the Matzah of life. He is the bread of life who never slumber nor sleep, never sat back and relax and retire. I have to do and finish and complete my father's work. And he gave that same mandate and commission to all of us in the body of Messiah. And he trusted us. He equipped us with his Torah and he filled us with his Ruach HaKodesh and with fire. And he gave us his gift and callings. And he gave us a community, or kala, or kehila, a family, a congregation, where we can engage ourselves together, praying for one another, helping one another, encouraging one another, teaching one another, reaching out for one another. He gave us everything, my friend. He gave us his holy presence. I feel like swimming in his presence daily. I could sense that despite of so many nisayon, so many testings and trials every day. But all is well with our souls. As long as we hold the plow, as long as we serve God, we are in the center of His will. But the moment we let go of the plow, we sit back and relax. Then we will rise up like a doe with chametz. I just pray, my dear friend, that we are going to be that matzah, that living unleavened bread for the salvation of so many hurting and wounded people from the nations of the world. Please, if you have been victimized by the good loving leaders of churches whom you have been following and trying to imitate their lifestyle of so many leisures and vacations, is spending all their precious resources being unworthy stewards instead of doing the work of God first for their families and second to their greater family, the Gufa Mashiach, the body of Messiah. I call upon you with love and humility. Do Teshuvah, repent, and make it right this time. Engage yourself in the work of the Lord while there is time. And God will reward you let go 
of the things that worries you, the fears, the worries. Let go of all these things because it is never from God. Put your trust in Emuna. All the more, the last two minutes, hit the road, my dear brother. You can make it. Elevate your, your neshama, your soul, higher and higher. Stop giving the alibi, but give it another try. And be triumphant. You can do it through Messiah Yeshua, who strengthens us. Do not hide your talents, but imitate that one and two faithful stewards who did not hide the talent, but let those ten talents increase, and that five talents increase, but the other one he buried on the Adama, on the earth. And when the owner came, he was severely punished. And he was branded as you wicked servant. You knew very well that I am a strict Lord. Why didn't you not make the talent that I've entrusted upon you? Why did he not earn a profit? Throw this unfaithful, wicked servant. Throw him into the outer darkness and let him gnash his teeth. My dear friend, it is true that those who are living a life of chametz, a life of leaven, a life of yeast, HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, they are going to be cut off from the house of Israel. Karet. Because yeast and leaven speaks of sin. May you be encouraged at the same time may you receive the warning from HaKadosh Baruch Hu with love. And I hope all of us together would hold our hands, join our hearts together over the whole body of Messiah, Jews and Gentiles alike. I have been bombarded, believe me or not. I have been bombarded with such, such call to help them. Help, help, help from Africa. It's all help. We're no longer eating for days. We are sick. Can you please give a helping hand? Back here in the remote provinces in the Philippines, we are being bombarded with humble, please help us. Help us. I pray that you have heard the message today. God is not asking you beyond your means. God is simply asking our hearts to obey. Because one day, He will transfer the treasures of the nation to those who are worthy. Like what he did exactly back there in Mitzrayim, Egypt. And our Jewish brothers came out of Mitzrayim. Loaded with their caravans of treasures. From the hands of the Mitzrayim, the Egyptians. Who voluntarily gave their treasures. The works of God. Because God knew. In their journey towards Eretz HaKodes, they will be needing those treasures for the holy work of the Mishkan, the tabernacle, for God's name and God's glory and God's dwelling place. Shabbat Shalom. Lehitroth, my dear friends.
חג מצות שמח, אין כל טוב.